Who are sure. some instances or people in early history of the church, officials, that were pro-science and pro-faith? Because we're talking about that topic with the church. Can you provide some examples sure. early on and their respective theories? This is Katrina in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Perfect, uh, Katrina. Um, here, yes, there are many, as a matter of fact. And to start off with, here are some clerics and priests. So we're not just talking about Catholic scientists. We're talking about priests who are scientists or clerics who are scientists. First, Nicholas Copernicus. Now, you might hear his name come up. Now, Nicholas Copernicus was not a priest, but he was a cleric. He had minor orders. He was a canon lawyer. But of course, he was also an incredibly fine mathematician and scientist. And you'll remember him. He is the first person to postulate on the basis of mathematical potentiality a heliocentric solar system. That is to say, a solar system where the sun's in the center and the planets are revolving around it. So Nicholas Copernicus, that's called the Copernican Revolution. So this is the big, huge step in science, right? And, and of course, most people have no idea that Copernicus was not against the church. Copernicus was a minor cleric and canon lawyer in the church, and he's the one that got the Copernican Revolution, obviously named after him, going. And not only did he do that, he justified it mathematically. Some people, and we'll get to Galileo in future episodes, but, but some people think that Galileo was persecuted by the church for believing in the heliocentric solar system, for believing that the sun was in the center and the planets revolved around the sun. That couldn't be the reason Galileo was, was uh, you know, uh, disciplined by the church. In fact, it wasn't the reason, as, as we'll, we'll talk about, mm -hmm. because, of course, it was Copernicus who had postulated it way before Galileo, proved the possibility mathematically, and he was a Catholic cleric, and the church didn't persecute him. He continued operating within the church. We'll talk about Galileo mm -hmm. at another time. He was disciplined because he made a promise that right. he broke, and not only that, he, he did some other crazy things as well. In fact, we but talked the, the about actually... Thing, uh, actually doing an entire program in the future on Galileo because mm -hmm. it's always brought up all the time. Yeah. Go ahead, Father. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, and but uh, true enough, true enough. And uh, the second uh, person you, you might want to attend to is a fellow by the name of Gregor Mendel. And if you studied your biology, <laughs> uh, even in high school, you will have heard of this man because, of course, he is the father of quantitative genetics. So he not only discovers, you know, the, the possibility, potentiality of genetics, but is able to show quantitatively, you know, where the tendencies would be. So this is a first, you know, genuine rules for, you know, genetic uh, typing. And of course, you might know that he was an Augustinian monk, a priest and an abbot. So he was the abbot of his Augustinian monastery and, of course, the father of quantitative genetics. You, you might have heard of another person, too. Uh, his name is uh, Bishop Nicholas Steno. And for those of you who are in modern uh, geology and stratigraphy and, of course, fossil dating, rock dating, layering, uh, you will know that he is the father of, of modern uh, geology and stratigraphy and he was a Danish Roman Catholic bishop while he was, of course, doing this. And, and just a fourth person, uh, and I'll give you some resources to discover 22 others uh, in, in a minute, but a fourth person is, is Father um, uh, Georges Lemaitre. And uh, you might have heard me talk about him in, in, in other episodes. But Father Lemaitre was not only a World War I uh, hero. Uh, he basically got a PhD uh, in uh, cosmology, physical cosmology, uh, came to the United States and became a, a colleague of Albert Einstein's mm -hmm. and Sir Arthur Eddington's. And, and he was, you know, by the way, he's a very well-known physicist to this day. Right today, we still have Lemaitre Walker space-time, the first Lemaitre constant, right? So there's lots of things in physics today named 
named after this fellow Lemaitre. But the most important thing that Father Lemaitre did was he discovered the Big Bang Theory, which has now become the most rigorously established cosmological theory that there has ever been. In 1927, it was Lemaitre who postulated this theory. And when he, right, he was responding to a problem uh, which was, well, was called the recessional velocities of extragalactic nebulae. But essentially that, that problem meant that, that there were light sources outside of our own Milky Way galaxy that were simply traveling too fast. And they couldn't be explained by Einstein's general theory of relativity alone. It was the wonderfully creative uh, Father Lemaitre who actually postulated, you know, hey, wait a minute, <clears throat> this could be completely explained if we just assumed that the whole universe was blowing up like a balloon and that all the galaxies were like little dots on the surface of this balloon and that space-time was the elastic of the balloon and that as space, you know, as, as the balloon, right, as space-time stretched and grew, right, all of these galaxies would be separating from one another precisely at the rates that they were. So he presents this to Einstein, right, and, and Einstein looks at, you know, um, Lemaitre's explanation, he equation, which is completely dependent on Einstein's general theory of relativity. And of course, he looks at him and says, well, and the mathematics is excellent, but the physics is preposterous. Imagine an expanding universe. <laughs> it's, and of course, later on, when Edwin Hubble finished his survey of the heavens, mm -hmm. right, three years later, inviting Einstein up to Mount Wilson, just north of us, right, uh, you know, basically Einstein and, and uh, Hubble came together and, 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 and admitted, yes, the universe is expanding as a whole. And, and later on, uh, he told uh, Lemaitre, it is one of the finest explanations of creation I have ever heard. Right. So um, those are just four guys. Stephen Barr, a, a good physicist right. there at the University of Delaware, has uh, cataloged uh, many other Jesuit uh, and, and uh, diocesan uh, and, and uh, order priests, religious order priests, who were instrumental in the development of science. So if you put his name, Stephen Barr, B-A-R-R, -R, priest scientists into Google, you'll come up okay. with uh, even more examples, but no, right. no, the, the church has certainly not been against science. Uh, we've been absolutely integral to the development of it.